Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. Once again, it's October and October's Horror Movie Month. And this episode, we are going to be covering and reviewing The Lost Boys, 1987. Uh, a movie that I loved as a kid when it came out. Um, unlike uh, movies like The Gate, which I saw like twice and checked out on, um, I've probably seen this movie no less than 50, 60 times in my life. Um, mm. Such a good movie. Before we even get started, I still think it holds the or stands the test of time. I just had a lot of fun watching this movie, and I always do. Yeah, I um, <clears throat> I honestly I haven't seen it nearly as much as you. I remember seeing it in the theaters. I remember watching it a couple times, uh, like with my sisters growing up, because they were older than me, so they were more the age of Michael than I was. I yeah. was more Corey Aim, Corey Feldman age when this came out. Yes. A little bit younger. And I always really liked it. <clears throat> I never, never appreciated it as much as I did watching it last night. Yeah. It was absolutely fantastic. Now, it had its problems, like any movie does. Every movie has a but few they're, issues. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're almost irrelevant to the overall story, to uh, the vampires, the way they look, the way they act. All of it was fantastic. Yep. Very, um, very pleased with uh, how this one turned out. And before we get too far into it and get into the IMDb stuff, um, do we have any advertisers this week? We do. This week, Kiss the Reviews is brought to you by Face Off, the board game. Hey kids, do you like violence? Then you'll love Hapsbro's newest game, Face Off. Face Off the board game is a perfect blend of Operation, Monopoly, and the game of life. How, you ask? Easy. We supply you and your opponent a scalpel, haircutting scissors, and a bone chisel so you can remove your actual face and trade it with your rival. Once the procedure is done, it's a race to the finish line where you'll roll the dice in order to escape jail and increase homicide rates in the greater Los Angeles area until you meet each other for the ultimate showdown. If you win, you will be able to surgically attach your own face back on. Think it's over? No way, kid. Once you've reached the winner's circle and survived your face reattachment surgery, you will be presented with your new adopted son. Face off the board game. This game is so fun, you may just lose your head. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I, uh, I already have it on pre-order, so... It is a good one. It, it is a good one. Um, I do like the, uh, there's little cards, almost like chance cards in Monopoly, uh, but you have yeah. to like swipe the other dude's face. It's it's That's... it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's going to be an exciting, exciting game. Let's get into The Lost Boys. Um, do you have the IMDb description of said movie? I do. IMDb. IMDb. One sentence description of The Lost Boys is, after moving to a new town, two brothers discover that the area is a haven for vampires. Short, sweet, and to the point. And that's what the movie's about. That's how, by the way, IMDb people, that's how you write one sentence. Yes. That I easy. don't know. Is it IMDb people, or do they like take it off the, the official movie description whatever oh i hope it's imdb people because uh, those are official movie descriptions <laughs> brother more sentences broaden broaden your horizons on plot details fill people in agreed <clears throat> no this movie it's so good watching just they set up so perfectly in the beginning and this is kind of how you foreshadow and get exposition out of the way, is you learn very quickly Diane Weiss is divorced, they're broke, and she's moving her and her two sons up to uh, uh, Santa Clarita, California, which I'm assuming is like Northern Cal California-ish, not I'm quite LA. Yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah, and <clears throat> uh, uh, they're just looking for a fresh start, have to move in with their grandfather. Excellent setup. It's how you work it. Um, I genuinely, I, I really don't have a complaint. 
No, I, I don't either. The They mix the horror and the uh, uh, humor very well. Yeah. <clears throat> I will say this. I will say this. Whatever had happened in the divorce, in this marriage, it has royally, royally fucked up Corey Haim's character. Yes. Because he is way too infantile for how old he is. <laughs> he still sleeps with his mom. He, he he gets scared easily in comic books. He still takes he a bath. And he takes a bath, and his brother, his older brother, has to tell him, "Sam, go take your bath." <laughs> what? That's insane. I literally in like the 1950s, and I know it's all comic relief, but it's just like, my God, this kid. I literally has massive problems. I took a note <laughs> on this and. I, I just wrote, <laughs> Michael tells Corey Haim's character, Sam, to go take your bath. Who takes a bath after they're, like, five? <laughs> right. And it, it's not like he gets in the bath and he's like, I gotta take a bath and this sucks. No, he's having a good-ass time in that tub. So Loving it. <laughs> absolutely. Loving it. He's, he's spiking his hair up into a mohawk. Oh, like yeah. he did as a kid. He's singing to his dog. I mean, he made it look so awesome to take a bath. I kind of wanted to take a bath. <laughs> if I wasn't a grown man. <laughs> yeah, man. Take a bath. Light some candles. Put on the thong song. Let's just see what happens. Get weird. Get weird with it, homie. The one thing that I did not like about this. Um, a, Michael, uh, you know, Jason Patrick's character... Uh, and Sam, Corey Haim's character, find their, like, new best friends in, like, two minutes. Like, they get to town, they go to the boardwalk, apparently there's always a party on the boardwalk, and um, they find their friends in, like, two minutes. Like, Michael finds a girl that he falls in love with three seconds after being there. Um, oh, and, like, creepily stalks her. Yes. And there's some weird band with like Lou Ferrigno playing the saxophone and singing and he he thinks he's the coolest shit to ever like play. I thought this was Glenn Danzig's first movie role. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been. It could have been. That dude that was the most jacked dude jacked ponytailed shirtless fellow I have ever seen playing a dual role in a rock band as the lead singer and lead saxophonist. Yes. Yes, exactly. And boy, he liked that saxophone. When he started smoking that saxophone, his hips, like his hips were moving in such a way that my hips popped out of socket. Dude. He, he got, was feeling himself <laughs> so hard. When, when he was playing the sax, he got everybody in the front row pregnant. <laughs> Yo. And he was drenched in baby oil. <laughs> Yes, he was. Just like an, an inordinate amount of baby oil oh. <laughs> just lathered up. If you owned stocks in baby oil in 1987, <laughs> you were a rich motherfucker you, right now. You did well for yourself. Because <laughs> Glenn Danzig in his first movie role <laughs> went all but, fucking Hulk Hogan on it. But Corey Haim, Sam, finds his best friends in two minutes at the, um, you know, his first night in town. And, you know, he flexes his nerd muscles because, you know, he, he knows everything about uh, comic books. Um, but Let me my... tell you something. Not the way you win friends back in my day. No, that's how you get beat up back, yeah. back, back in our day. But the, the problem that I had with, with the whole scene and from him meeting his two best friends, the Frog Brothers, um, is Corey Feldman's character. I don't mind the character so much, but what Corey Feldman did with his voice in this role is plain annoying. It's just annoying. You didn't like the Caruso of it all? <laughs> I did it. Listen, I know he's playing a comic book geek, you know, that's like this militant vampire slayer guy who has never seen a vampire because he shits no. his pants when he finally does. Little but Jesus Christ. Like, if I'm the director, I'm like, listen, I know the, the Corys at this time were, were pretty big. Yeah. Um, but I look at Feldman and go, you need to do 
one less line of cocaine during the shoot and what's with the voice your normal voice is just fine like you, you don't... know what they probably did <clears throat> they probably looked at the cast and they looked at everybody's character on paper and they said all right Corey Haim in this movie is 13 we'll say right yeah acts like about a five-year-old <laughs> Corey Feldman in this movie is also 13. We need him to act like a 35-year-old so it just blends. They so, just ram into so each they, other in that perfect blend. So they can meet in the middle. <clears throat> exactly. I just, the, the, like that, Corey Feldman's voice, I didn't, you know, really like. I actually liked his character. I just didn't like the way he, he, he voiced said character. Um this is the one thing I had an issue with with his character, much like um, uh, uh, what was his name, Terry in the Gate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Dude, Corey Feldman is going to be a serial killer. His yes. character in this movie is growing up psychotic because his first instinct is to fucking stake <laughs> everyone. <laughs> yeah, just like, oh, your brother's a vampire, stake him. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. That's my brother. Exactly. No, you'll feel better. Just stake him. Just... As soon as they get Jamie Gertz and the little boy up there, which, by the way, little boy, his name was Gladdy. I mean, little boy. The kid's name in the movie is Boy. But anyway, <clears throat> they, uh, they, what, uh, uh, Corey Feldman wants to kill them. I mean, they're helping him. Yeah. Don't you think it may, may be beneficial to have little boy and Jamie Gertz help you instead of just fucking staking everything you see. Yeah. I job. just, I, I, the whole Michael character, like I get you're in a new city and you want to belong. My issue with like, cause he stalks star. Um, yes. Who is played by Jamie Gertz. And, mm -hmm. um, he follows her. He finds out that she hangs out with this like motorcycle gang and he's totally cool with following along with said motorcycle gang, which yep. when you, when you see his character at the beginning, he he's like a suburbanite who might like some hard rock music. Like, right, like, like he buys a leather jacket after he met star. Yes. And I thought they, they like, were I, showing you that. Like <laughs> I thought they were broke. But he apparently he has like four hundred dollars to buy a leather jacket. <laughs> Dude, that leather jacket was stolen three days ago in Burbank and made it up there. Hey, you fell off the back of a truck. I'm not going to question it. <laughs> exactly, fifty bucks. Yeah. So, he, you know, he all of a sudden he's like riding now in this weird motorcycle gang with the guy from Bill and Ted's, um, who has a terrible weave, because um, and never says one word. No. He's the only one that doesn't look right with long hair because he's the only one that just doesn't look like he belongs in that game. <laughs> he does. Um, <clears throat> which is, which is, I'm assuming why he, he dies first because he needs yeah. to die. Um, but yeah, he, he just joins this and rides motorcycles with these guys. And then again, first night they're showing him like their hangout. And yep. they're, you know, they're feeding them maggots and worms like David Copperfield showed up. I thought these guys were vampires, not like magicians and illusionists. It's Sabrina. No, dude, they hired Sabrina the Teenage Witch from the gate party <laughs> to come over <clears throat> and hook them up with a couple ideas like, hey, we want to scare this dude. Yeah. Michael's, Michael's first reaction to every problem seems to be to punch David in the face. Yes. And after he punches him in the face, they keep inviting him to other places. <laughs> it's, at what point do you realize you're being set up? Exactly. And at what point is it kind of your own fault? Like you just played chicken on a cliff. They, you willingly played. They told you they were going to a bluff. Yes. So either you're dumb and don't know what that means, or two, you were a willing participant. Then, because you lost said game of chicken, you punch dude in the face. His reaction is, hey, man, let me come show you where I live. Are you fucking nuts? Exactly. 
She's just like, cool, man. So they turn him into a vampire because he actually drinks blood. Like, oh, these are maggots. Not really. These are worms. Not really. This is blood. Oh, not really. They can't. This can't be blood. I'm going to totally drink this because blood totally tastes like wine. Sure. Um, Every time I've drank blood, it tastes exactly like a good <laughs> Merlot. Exactly. And it has the same consistency, too. It's not thick at oh, all. Yeah. Um, no. And it's also good for your heart like wine. <laughs> exactly. This is the only other problem I have with this movie. Because we'll get into things that I love about this movie, like when we talked about the gate, the payoff when you find the, the leader of the vampires. and It's just a good payoff. You feel... Yes you feel like you got something out of this movie. Like, if you paid to go see it in the theater, like, I got my money's worth with this movie. Oh, absolutely. Um, the twist that it was Max the whole time. Yeah, but when they find out, you know, where they hang out, and they, you know, Corey Feldman and his man voice try to go down and, and kill the vampires, um, and they only kill one, mm -hmm. David chases him out, uh, you know, chases all the kids out, and Michael gets Star and Laddie out of the, the cave and into the car. Yes. When David comes out and chases uh, the Corys out of the, the, the mm. cave, his skin burns because it's daylight yes. outside. Catches on fire. But Star and Laddie are in the car, barely covered up, no burns. Michael is just in the car like hey guys no burns and as they drive away they put down the the rag top to cover them from getting burns that they don't have so yes. that was my that was my big issue was the, the the inconsistency there but outside of that the the end fight scene when you know all the, the vampires come to attack and basically kill Michael and his family and whatever. The the payoff for um, Diane Weiss, Lucy, her boyfriend, yep. <clears throat> who is the you know vampire leader. Like that's it's all great. And then the grandfather is like the comedic, you know, yes. the, com the the comic relief, um, and you know the end line of you know. Just too many goddamn vampires in Santa Clarita or whatever the hell he says to, to finish yep. the movie. Like, it's just all in all fantastic beginning to end. And like you said, the, the setup of the movie, you get to meet all the characters. The exposition is fine. Like, there isn't somebody, like, out of the bottom corner, like, message. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> everything, it was written well. It was shot well. The I mean, just all the actors in it are huge. Oh, phenomenal. And, and, and they, they did great. Yeah, they all did a great job. So They did a great job. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I again, I really can't complain about this at all. I have two nitpicky things, which are just me personally. One, they took too long to show David and the rest of the guys as vampires, like when they're up in the tree feeding. Yeah. With... They're trying to get Michael to feed for the first time. Yep. <clears throat> That's the first time you really see them as vampires. Yeah. It would have been a better surprise had we not seen things hovering above other characters and killing them. Yeah. We know that. We know what I mean. Like, we know they're vampires at that point. If there was another way just to show the people uh, gone missing that have crossed paths with David. Yeah. Then it seems like it's, well, are they killers or are they actual vampires? And then you get the payoff, like a dust till dawn kind of thing. You know yeah, what I mean? Yep. Um, so that took, a, that took a little, it seemed like they were really p planning on that being like the payoff. It was yeah. like, rah, it's a vampire. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, though. That feeding scene was a, mm. it was a fantastic scene. Dude, and, when Kiefer Sutherland bites into that bald dude's head. Yeah. Like the top of his head and just, I was like, oh. Shit, that was graphic. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a great scene. Again, nitpicking. Exactly. Uh, my other my other complaint with this, I guess, is <clears throat> Diane Weiss, or Weiss, whatever, I don't pay her any disrespect because I love her. Yeah. But no, she plays a great role in this. She does. 
but she's also I'm gonna I'm just gonna toss this out there. She's not a great mom. No, she's a terrible mom. Because she doesn't ever seem to fight for the kids. Like when they're talking about the divorce and why she's so broke, it's because she said she a, nobody needed a big nasty legal fight. Not right now. Yeah. So she gave the husband whatever he wanted. <laughs> yeah. Max has Corey Haim at the end. Yeah, Corey Haim at the end in a headlock, <clears throat> and he's saying, you know, telling uh, Diane Weiss's character, "This is why I want a Jew." You're going to be the mom to all of us. We're all going to be one big vampy Brady Bunch. <laughs> and she just goes, okay, and takes his hand. Bitch, at some point, you got to fight for your kids. She just didn't want anybody she... to get hurt. I'm going to defend her because I... I... I'm, I'm going to go ahead and toss this out there that when you're bit in the neck and turned into an undead fucking vampire, <laughs> you're getting hurt. Well, Michael maybe, was Michael was already maybe, too far gone. <laughs> maybe the two female characters in this movie shouldn't be so sub, uh, subservient to their masters, is all I'm saying. Agreed. Because Diane Weiss, every time something happens, ducks and covers. Yeah. She's done. Jamie Gertz, <clears throat> excuse me, one time she has the choice to go against – or. Uh, one time she goes with Michael, and that's because he carries her out because she's too weak to do anything. Yeah. When he carries her out of the cave, every other time she chooses to get on David's motorcycle. She's she's she. They they went sleepy by because it's daytime. <laughs> I get it. I'm just saying. She's not very Diane Weiss for a mother that loves her sons as much as she does. Doesn't seem to fight very hard for them. Agreed. Agreed. But no, she's she's not the she's not the best mom in the world and. Yeah, but I will say I will say this: my my complaint with Jeepers Creepers, <clears throat> if you remember, was that the uh, Derry and Trish, brother and sister, seemed very close, but they didn't communicate at all through the movie when the shit really hit the fan. Yeah, yeah. This movie was the exact opposite. They were very close and communicated everything to each other throughout this movie. Yeah, and that that to me was more of a relate like Diane Weiss's character really seems like she was there to introduce Max as the main vampire. Yeah, yeah. She was almost an afterthought, which is a shame because she's a really great actress. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, <clears throat> they should have showed her a little stronger. Like, I would have liked, instead of the grandfather killing Max, just outright, if, like, she, like, took his hand and went in and he was about to bite her and she staked him or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that 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 would have something been. a little bit that shows that she's tough. Yeah, you know, she's a single mother essentially. She's just like, fuck it, I'm tired of fighting. Make Look me a you. vampire, divorce me, and take my money. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, it's not worth the fight to me. Look at you standing up for women. Good job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> just don't call me a feminist. <laughs> no, no, I won't. Um, but all in all, uh. One, I thought this definitely uh, withstands the test of time. 100%. Fantastic movie. Uh, well written, well directed, well acted. Um, and like we said to start it, there's going to be questions with like every movie, but mm -hmm. there aren't many with this one, just with me. There's a few that I'm like, eh, I would have done it this way or that way. Um, yeah. But IMDb gave it a uh, is a seven point three out of ten. Highest rated watched. Yes, this is the highest rated mm. we've watched so far, and I completely agree. Yeah, man. Like I said, I could have, I really could have done without Glenn Danzig, but other than that, <laughs> it was great. Yes, they could have taken Glenn Danzig out of the movie. Just the just I could have done with less saxophone solos and hip gyration. I needed and, the I needed the hip gyration, but a singer that plays saxophone doesn't exist, so I can only um, suspend disbelief for so long. And uh, the the singer saxophone player, I just I, I couldn't wrap my, my my arms around that one. <laughs> no, but if I can move my hips like that and play saxophone, I'm going to learn to play saxophone. And I'd have six kids. So Yo, there you go. Six. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm, I'm old and slow now. I'd only have six. <laughs> Your spermies so, ain't. But yeah, it gets it gets a, a thumbs up for me. I love this movie. 
Yes, sir. Hundred percent. Watch it, it if you haven't seen it. It is absolutely worth your time. Absolutely. And for a nineteen, I'll, I'll end on this. For a nineteen eighty seven film, um, mm-hmm. there's a lot of films from from that era um, that when you watch it, feel like a 1987 film and not just because of of fashion and what they're wearing. Right. um, But just the entire film feels dated. This one didn't feel outside of some of the fashion choices. um, Yeah. But it's almost confusing because they almost take you back to the seventies if it wasn't for the hair, because they have an obsession with Jim Morrison in this movie that I do not understand. Yeah, no, me neither. But the outside of the fashion, Mm-hmm. The and the haircuts. This movie doesn't feel like it's a 1987 film. No. So no. If, I mean, like if you get caught up in that, if you're skipping over plot details to get caught up in the way their hair looks or their fashion is, you're just an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, we'll this end. This movie's worth getting lost in. We'll we'll end we'll end on that note because I love this movie. This movie is great. You liked it, so. We give it a thumbs up. Thanks for coming in and watching Kiss the Reviews again. Um, Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. If there's a movie you want us to cover, let us know about it. And uh, that's all I got. You got anything else? Not a sir. All right. For Corey, I'm Armando. Thanks for coming in again. And we'll see you with our next episode.